Um, I want to introduce our wonderful panelists. We've got some great, great people here, very diverse backgrounds, which is nice. Um, I'm Sarah Cooperman. I'm the CEO of SCW Fitness Education and Water in Motion. I'm the fool that does these webinars three times a week. And I think it's the only thing that keeps me sane because I think it's such a, such a physical distancing and we're all such physical people that this is a crazy time. So I really want to welcome uh, Marissa Hoff. Uh, she shares her proven strategies and profound experiences at various conferences throughout the country. She works with a consulting business, so she helps clubs like ours. So that's wonderful. Kia Williams has a master's in recreation and sports management, and she's managed fitness and wellness programs and facilities across the country. She's also a master trainer and a bar above, and I know of some other modalities. And she's got a new podcast, so I listened to it. It's really, really good. And we have the wonderful Paul Christopher. It came, he came highly recommended to me from Abby Apple. So it's Abby's fault if he sucks. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, Paul, don't suck, okay? But he's the founder and director of programming for Gravity and Oxygen Sports Performance. Um, he's authored a book. He is an expert on um, independent club and boutique studio um, ownership and operations. He had the great, I'm going to say pleasure of being able to open today. Was it today, Paul? Or is so, it tomorrow? We're legally allowed to open up tomorrow, but we're going to do it Tuesday because I'd rather do it right than in a rush. Okay. All right. What I love about this topic is, is it's very broad. We're going to talk about social media social responsibility and social interaction and it's very important for all of us to do it and we've got to look at it what what's going on now and what's going to happen in the future and that's something that is not only important but it's very very relevant um we're going to look at approaching social media while maintaining professional responsibility to our fitness industry We'll cover various ways to integrate social media into our economic survival because I am a firm believer like what happened after 9-11 with TSA and it, we all thought, oh, it'll go back to regular. Can't you remember when you didn't have to take your shoes off? Like, no, sweetheart, it's forever changed and we better adapt now to the way we're living and having to social distance and having to really work our social pres social media presence. So um, looking at when the mandatory closures lift, which Paul, unfortunately, and very wisely has spent all day, you spent all day working on that facility okay. and you're planning to work on more tomorrow to, to, to open it correctly on Tuesday how to take our live classes and PT sessions online, and then how to maintain it. So the first question we want to talk about is how should we build our social network to grow our physical influence? And Marissa, I'm going to start with you. We started chatting and you were talking about best practices and consulting with club owners. And what are your recommendations? Well, I mean, from the very basics, I think one of the things that everyone needs to look at, whether you're managing the business Facebook page or your personal one as an instructor or trainer, is to make sure that everything from your profile is updated to the T. So in Instagram, you want to have that bio, you want to have that unique URL to whatever it is you need, and you want to make sure that you fill in all the I's and T's and make sure everything is complete from the basic thing. And then my preachy thing about social media that I think people forget is it's not a billboard. It's not a place where you just throw up some sort of ad or post. It is a place for you to be social and interact. So whether you're a trainer or a club owner or a fitness manager, that Facebook presence, Instagram presence needs to be social, a back and forth. And I really strongly suggest that people take the time to do that every day and interact with their followers and with their community. And in interacting every day, do you want them to post like 
you know, morning, midday and evening? And is it also being able to go on and then, um, and, and then interact with those people three times a day? Or do you want to do this three times a week or once a day? What do you recommend? Well, obviously it's going to vary depending on your business. The, what most experts will tell you now is that you need to be consistent. All right. So if you haven't been posting at all, for me to tell you to post three times a day and to come up with that content would be just completely out of the ordinary. Um, so if you're just starting out and this is new to you, I would suggest that you consistently post at least three to five times a week. That's the minimum. Um, Facebook would tell you that if you post every day for 30 days, your engagement is going to go through the roof. So whatever it is, it's posting content on a consistent basis. And then what I was talking about earlier in the interaction part, it's you interacting with other people's posts. Interesting. And Kia, I, I saw you nodding. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you, Marissa, that it truly does depend on your audience in the stance that you're taking your brand presence online. You want to be consistent, but what does consistency mean to your brand? I'm an advocate of a call for action, so always a question answer type post. But if you are posting those types of posts, you've got to answer. You've got to follow up with nearly every single comment that a person makes under your post. You can't just follow up with a thumbs up or a like. If a person writes a paragraph to you, you almost got to match that level of interaction because that's way more authentic. It makes you seem more like a real human being as opposed to an artificial robot running your social media. That's not what we've been introduced to social, social media to be. It's true interaction and authentic interaction. I like that a lot, but speaking as a person who gets bombarded and- Oh and, yeah, you're popular. And then, yeah, I'm so popular. It's like drives me insane. I stupidly started a personal account, which has a limit of 5,000, which I reached years ago. So now I started a business and I'm going to have to transition my personal to, it's insane. But sometimes I do do the thumbs up. I figure that's better than nothing because otherwise I just, I don't have a life because I, I'm, I still have to answer the emails. But I love that, that you say you've got to respond in like. Like if somebody emails you, you answer an email. You don't suddenly, you know, text them or send them a message on Facebook. Right. Um, really trying to respond to people in the way that they're communicating with you if you're trying to sell something and really connect with them. Now, Paul, we got the question of, somebody wrote in, where's your club? Um, and also, I also see Patricia said, does the audio seem low today? Just turn your personal volume up, Patricia, and that'll help everybody you'll be able to hear us better. But Paul, please share, share, uh, share with us, where is your club? Because I'm so jealous because you're going to open and it's in, I'm going to give it away, Boca Raton, Florida. Yeah, oh my it, God. It, it has like, a, it has like a, a snooty connotation, Boca Raton, because you hear it in television shows and what have you, right? Exactly. The East Coast Beverly Hills. So we are a 5,000 square foot boutique facility that offers both group classes and person training. We're a mile from the ocean. So luckily we've been able to have plenty of outdoor exercise. Um, to back to your question, so yes, the governor just Friday announced that all gyms in Palm Beach County can now open up as of Monday. So we are anticipating a call out, a, a relinquishing of the distance, but now that it's real, we gotta make sure that we do it right and not in a rush. That's important guys. Do it right, not in a rush. Are you going to lose any potential customers over 24 hours of, of opening up on Monday or Tuesday? You're not. I think your current membership, the ones that are currently paying your rent and your income, will be happy if you get it done right and then not in a rush. So um, we have our staff coming all day tomorrow because we did have 60% of our workforce decide to social distance as well. So I had a solid core of three employees basically that were with me as my right-hand people. So now that I have my squad back, the intention is to get the place all prepared. During the entire eight weeks, we broadcast 55 live workouts. Now we traditionally do high intensity interval training, the idea of gravity and oxygen, strength training, and cardiovascular, but knowing that people had children at home out of school, we satisfied kids classes, 
We offered Sunday recovery uh, mobility or yoga, vinyasa yoga. So we knew that we had to provide more than just what our identity is at our gym to give people the full spectrum of wellness. And we had a great response. Um, I think from a social media standpoint, our big tricky play was we have a private group just for our paying membership. And then we have our public business page. So at first we were only broadcasting on our private group to people who are paying, but we figured, why don't we try to gain more exposure so that way on the back end of this, we might be able to garner more membership. So we decided to broadcast on our live business page and then share to our private group. Now, if people due to hard times getting furloughed from work, if they just could not maintain their membership actively during our broadcast and during this two months, then they can still be able to watch us publicly. So then does it create bitterness between people who are paying and getting access to broadcast as opposed to people who are still getting that free? So that was a big tricky thing. But we, we realized that our membership doesn't know who was continuing to pay and who had to freeze or relinquish their active membership. So we kept it public and there really wasn't any backlash in regards to that because we figured we were providing value add to our membership in regards to maintaining exercise and fitness during those 55 broadcasts. Mm -hmm. We also publicized an equipment loan program where we allowed our membership to come in on a Friday in a very civilized manner to go ahead and have two people in our gym at a time. We had a selected amount of equipment on our floor that was pre-scrubbed and disinfected, and they can use that um, at home as another incentive to maintain their membership while we were closed. So all these angles provided value for our membership, the broadcast, the equipment loan, all these things. We even had our colleague, Nick Tuminello. I bought 50 of his product and gave them out complimentary to members who came into the equipment loan. So all these things were value add during a time of crisis and pandemic to help sustain and minimize damage of revenue. And how do you transition or how would you recommend people transition from let's say free Facebook live class that they're posting once a day to then say, well, the clubs are opening and now we're going to charge. And how do you estimate the value of that? And how do you measure and manage your membership? So I believe that we do have some members that are gonna to continually to stay virtual and, and social distance. So since we're not doing a broadcast specific workout and we now open up Tuesday, we're going to live broadcast our 9 a.m. workouts in our new expanded 2000 square foot outdoor turf and they can follow along at home as if they were on the turf with us. So now instead of having to pay wages for an additional hour for having a virtual coach and then having a live in gym coach, we're going to blend and just broadcast the live workout in the gym, still monitoring social distance and precautions of wiping after each station. But now our currently paying member can now feel like they're part of the group and see people they haven't seen in a while. So that's how we're blending that aspect. Does that help answer your question? Yes, yes, absolutely. I did want to mention that there is a company that sells a turf mat. It's called Turf on the Go. I'll ask my team, I'll ask Denise or, or Katrina to type it in for us. And they can do, uh, people can purchase and they can mail to them a turf map that they can use at home to keep your programs going. That's very, very interesting. I saw Marissa nodding her head and I would love you to contribute. Well, I, I was thinking about two things as Paul was talking. First of all, congratulations on getting open and it sounds like it's gonna be amazing, Paul. That's great. Um, and I love the fact that you're gonna continue to offer some of these classes to the community at large, I think. Uh, that's a great way to get people a little bit of a teaser, if you will, into what you're gonna offer. And it's a, a goodwill gesture, I think, for the community. And I would recommend that there would always be something available. Um, you know, Paul has 55 videos on a Facebook page that people could continue to go to and look through for all, for all eternity if you wanted, right? Um, and I think what I would, possibly consider if I were a club owner would be to have a tiered sort of system so that the library would be available to everyone, but then possibly uh, maybe more updated or live stream videos would be updated along with a membership that might be plus virtual. So I might be a member who uh, would buy a regular membership and then would love the opportunity to do some virtual workouts at home 
with a different set, but that's down the line. All of us were scrambling like you did, Sarah, to get these webinars up and going. We were scrambling to get whatever content we could out there. And I think the next step uh, that we're all exploring is how to make sure to uh, continue to reach new people and monetize those efforts, right? I don't, I don't wanna have my instructors that I've been going to forever teaching for free for the next five years. You've said this before, Sarah, and I think it's so important. Uh, to value yourself as a professional is super important uh, because you really do offer great services. And it is important also to have something complimentary and have something free and connect with people because there are just this past week, three million people went on unemployment. Three million in one week alone. And I would encourage you, a lot of people did go out and get the PPP, the stimulus package loan, um, either as an independent contractor or through their boutique studio. Just yesterday, they came out with a forgiveness package, which means how you really calculate what you're gonna be forgiven on the loan, which means you get this loan for 100,000, 200,000, whatever you know, amount of money it is, and then are you required to pay it back? And you need to figure it out now before it comes due when you go, oh my goodness, I should have done that. So we're gonna do another webinar on something like that. But I do, I, I'm really interested, Marissa, in what you said. Do they put it on a private, you know, uh, uh, Paul's got this, these 55 wonderful videos. Mm -hmm. Does then he build a library on a private Facebook page? We got a wonderful question from someone or on YouTube or Vimeo, is there a, um, a platform that you might recommend? Paul, what are, what are you using? You're just using Facebook Live, correct? So we essentially, it looked, you know, you talked about um, shifting on the go and handling curveballs. So we changed the gym into a video, uh, a video room. So we would have one camera on Facebook Live, we would have one camera on Zoom, and we would have um, one camera on Instagram. So we'd have three cameras surrounding the instructor. Um, and basically the Zoom would be, we paid for the upgraded uh, uh, service to be able to have that data upload. So we had that and then we would um, save on our business page, share to our private group page. And then we also had an Instagram. And if you look at your phone, especially if you have an iPhone, you can also do what's called um, you know, recording. So you can take a two minute slab and if, if IGTV only allows up to 10 minutes max of recording, you could take a two minute sliver from your iPhone, record what you were, what you were, um, what you were recording, and then put that on your IGTV, which stays in there permanently as well. So live on Instagram, live on Facebook business, live on Zoom, record it on Facebook, record it on Zoom, take a sliver and put it on IGTV. And somebody asked us, you know, how do you manage the AV equipment? We're not even gonna go into that right now. There's a whole separate webinar on that. It is, I'll ask my team to type it in. Um, you can go into past webinars and there's a wonderful, sh uh, a whole detailed way of, um, of all the equipment you can purchase. It's very, very affordable, which is nice. And Zoom, the business Zoom only costs $14.95 a month. And it, it allows you a lot more capabilities, the recording capabilities, the storage capabilities, the number of people that actually can watch the webinar. You can go over that 40 minute mark, but you do not need to pay for um, the, the, the $14.95 a month if somebody else is running the webinar. Like for live stream mania, everything we're doing is on Zoom. And it's, everybody can just use their free accounts um, to go to anything for the entire weekend. So if, if you're gonna be the, the business posting, that's something you need to think about. Um, now, how can we expand our reach beyond our neighborhoods? And Paul, you touched upon that just a little bit. And all right, I'm gonna have a private group, but I'm gonna give them a taste here and how did you see people sharing? How did you see it grow? I think it was mainly from a attitude or um, an avenue of gratitude. People really um, being appreciative of us during these tough times, providing some kind of content and showing that we weren't um, going dormant or lying down or closing doors until we had to reopen. It was just the gratitude shown. And that's the way people
people can, can share and the tentacles go exponential. So if I have a client who owns, I do have a client who owns a turmeric based supplement, fusionary formulas. So they, she then- they own, they own what? I'm sorry, I couldn't It's hear. called fusionary formulas. It's a turmeric based supplement. So she was sharing our videos on her fusionary formulas private group and she has 700 members. So the way it works exponentially. In Boca Raton, we have also Boca Moms Connect. We have Ask Boca. We have Boca Raton Triathletes. So I have been invited to all these private groups personally um, as an owner of Gravity Nation. And guess what we did one Sunday? We gave them preview videos on every single one of those private groups of what we're doing as a free value add to the community of Boca Raton. So I've got every mom in Boca looking, every endurance athlete looking, and everybody who's concerned with what's going on in Boca Raton getting awareness and approval of, Boca, of Gravity Nation. Oh, that's we, wonderful. Did, we did a video of the 50 best exercises you can do with household items. So we did a Facebook Live video, and I brought my professional videographer to then edit that, and we had a couple thousand views after with that. So mm -hmm. everything from a broomstick to a water jug to a bed sheet hooked into a door that acts like a TRX. So all these things just create that exposure. We did an immunity, immunity boosting webinar. We did the five best mobility moves you ever need. So all these things, as far as just free nuggets of information, are going to come back into the good juju universe. And I think the juju, the good juju. Um, I really, I, I believe that. I mean, we've been doing all these free webinars, and we've been doing it. We started just because we didn't have any way, any other way to connect with people, and then. It was a, it's been a wonderful way for us to promote for us our certifications. And I do want to assure everybody out there that, you know, SCW, we started doing live streaming nine months ago in October of last year. And we just started doing it live at our mania conferences. And it doesn't have to be that sophisticated. People can use their computers. People can use their phones or using their iPads. It can be it can be very nonchalant. It doesn't have to be um, strict. I think, Kia, you were talking about authentic. And that really resonated with me. And you, you do all these trainings and you promote people to come. And how are you leveraging being authentic? Um, just being yourself, being true to who you are, knowing your principles, your mission and vision statement, your purpose, your why, and always revealing yourself on that. And when you get those loyal followers and members, they're going to hold you to it, okay? They're going to let you know, <laughs> Marissa raised her hand like, hey, man, they are going to hold you to it. And they're going to let you know, especially if you do open that gate for, you know, willfully allowing feedback and surveying, they're going to let you know if something i'm from the south so i almost just let something slip if something in the milk ain't clean they'll let you know okay if you've changed a service that they love and adore <laughs> they're gonna let you know but you've got to let people have you know the go ahead to offer that up because that's essential to your business and when people do give you that valuable feedback that lets you know that that's brand ownership. They're taking ownership. And let us not forget, as um, we were all just talking, let's not forget the value and word of mouth when it comes to marketing. So utilizing that in person and also on social media to keep the, the revenue coming in for you, to keep the excitement going as well. I have a few tips to build on that, Sarah, if that's okay. Um, most of us in the club business, even as personal trainers or instructors, use referrals as our number one source. And um, one thing that is really useful is to make a contest. So if uh, those of you who are on my zone, for instance, they're encouraging us to take or use a specific um, I happen to have a picture of an online class that I currently am taking and I posted it on social. And I had three or four friends who are not local who joined because they saw that I was doing that. So if you can encourage the people that are attending your classes to post on social, it might be, I'll give you, you know, a month free of classes, or I have this really cute t-shirt, or I'll give you a one-on-one -on -one training and encourage people to post and tag you in that so that you can get that free user generated content. That's amazing. And then, 
partnerships like Paul talked about. Um, you may not be able to partner with Lululemon or Nike, but you certainly could partner with the coffee shop down the road or someone who's uh, selling Arbonne or someone who's doing uh, their own athletic wear and you can cross promote. So finding ways to expand through partnerships is really important. And then my third one is hashtags. So uh, a lot of fitness professionals have a tendency to use the word fitness. Uh, that's a really big hashtag. So if you want people to find you, you need to be a little more specific about your niche. So when you use that hashtag, make sure that it's targeted to a smaller audience than just fitness in general and uh, look for them yourself. So if people are talking about HIIT workouts in your area, you're going to follow them. You're going to engage with them on social. And between those three things, I think it's a really great way to expand your network. I really like that. And do is there a limit to the number of hashtags you recommend? Marissa, I always heard that you should kind of limit it to about four. Five to seven true? is what people are saying. You can use up to 30 on Instagram, but I would not suggest that at all. It looks too busy and too promotional. So uh, what I've seen is that brands, you know, at least one will increase your engagement by like, I think it's 16%, just one hashtag. So if you can go four is a great number, five, uh, just no more than seven. Okay, excellent. Paul, I'm going to ask you a little bit about your streaming. Um, and did you have your individual instructors doing it and your personal trainers doing it? Because there's a lot of programs out there, like uh, uh, Les Mills does a wonderful, gave all their programs free um, for one-time use for this pandemic time. And I love it, but I want to see my instructor. I want to, I want to hear their face. I want to see their face. I want to hear their voice. I, I can even see people in my class. I just took a class today at 12. My husband and I do hot yoga. We put the space heater in the basement, blew a fuse, <laughs> lost, <laughs> lost everything. It was really, it was very romantic. We couldn't see worth a damn. But anyway, so what did you do and how can we get these testimonials? Okay, so uh, let's give you a little background into what we do from a system standpoint. Keeping with the idea of gravity and oxygen, breaking down fitness into strength training and cardiovascular. We hold in our rotations in our classes, three muscle workouts, three hustle. And we mix and match every month and we cocktail them. So muscle is more regional, upper body strength, lower body strength, total body strength. Hustle is a little more fun and creative. So we do um, athletic performance, which is what we call adult PE class. We do metabolic conditioning, sets of exercise based upon time, not repetitions, getting into energy pathways. And then core and endurance is a hybrid double class. So extended time in our cardio machines. Keeping with that six template rotation, we kept it honest because the idea is if people are coming to our, our gym and maintaining membership for two, three years, it's because they believe in that template rotation system. So we had to stay honest to that system as the main hardcore part of our broadcasts. So yes, we did have our instructors. I may have taught one class a week and then I had all my other instructors teach um, their select time as well. Um, every day of the week too. So that way our membership can maintain familiarity with, um, with their instructor. And then I actually had Abby being a longtime colleague and neighbor of our facility in Boca. She came and taught classes and she is just the creme de la creme. So I figured what an extra special value add by having Abby come in as a guest. So that way you're giving your membership a little nugget. Who is this Abby girl? Who is this woman right here that I've never seen in the gym? Wow, she's amazing. So now we're creating intrigue. Is she going to teach classes live when they reopen? So we had our usual and one extra newbie. That's, that's great to do. Um, I just read another post somebody put up there and she has been advertising, you know, classes are going to be free through, and then she gave a deadline. She said through June. And I really like that. And then if you, if you, you know, if that pandemic continues and you have to extend it, it's extended but it gives, it sets up an expectation. Um, and I did read, uh, China has opened up and I have a friend that owns clubs, uh, consults with clubs in America and clubs in China. And he said that they're seeing a 10% show rate and within the first week they're getting upwards to about 24%. And one of the things that really accelerated the 
uh, influx of um, students to come back because people are scared. You know, FOGO, fear of going out, not just fear of missing out, um, is those testimonials. You know, they pull down their mask and say, everything was clean. I didn't touch anybody. They provided me gloves. They provided me hand wipes. They closed the locker room. So just come prepared because you're not going to, you know, be shoved in there. And they developed these protocols that then were commented on by members that really assured people that it was going to be a comfortable, safe environment. And again, posting it on Instagram and then flicking that little button so that it shows up also on Facebook and on your LinkedIn and on Twitter. Keep your videos, keep your testimonials. I'm going to, I always say under a minute, but I'm going to tell you, I would keep it under 30 seconds, 30 seconds or less. I was watching something on Netflix. I think I was watching the Michael Jordan special, which is on again tonight because I'm from Chicago. Um, and I was timing the commercials and they're 15 seconds. Some of those, the Geico commercials can be 15 seconds. Others can be 30 seconds. Do not let your testimonials, your videos that are promotional go over that, that 30, that 30 second mark. Um, now, I'm going to dive into this a little bit more. Is it right for us to continue teaching online when the clubs open? Because we have some, we have some independent instructors going, how do I navigate this? What do I do? Um, Marissa, I'm seeing you nod. Kia, Kia, you're like a prime instructor. What are your recommendations? Absolutely. And Sarah, you just hit the nail on the head. Just because our governors or even president says, you know, we're all open, go back. There's PTSD that our clients are experiencing and they're not sure. They're uncertain about what they could experience when they go back out. So you've taken all of this time, um, what we may call uh, innovators uh, disruption to disrupt the industry and to show like this is how we are accessible. This is how we can still reach our clientele from home in the comforts of their own home. Why negate that now? Why disappoint those people by taking away a valuable service? You've just created a valuable experience for them and made it truly accessible. Why just let that drop? You, you've really generated a lot of interest. Now, if we look at what happened to Blockbuster when Netflix happened, did you know that Blockbuster had the opportunity to buy out Netflix? Netflix before Netflix became what we know, and they did it. That's innovators' dilemma. When you're not really looking at opportunity that's out there, we have an opportunity to reach way more people than just our little niche or our little community. We're, we're worldwide. I just hosted a Bar Above certification. I'm in Colorado. Other participants are in states across the United States. Then there's Canada, then there's China. So I go on and say, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, because that's how we're broadcasting now. So that gives your program a lot of opportunity and value. So if what we do, if our purpose is truly to make people well, to make them better, we'll do our in them a disservice by taking away this access form. We know that a lot of businesses are creating tiered systems within their membership. Now you can come back live, but because we have to have our social distancing standards, we can't allow just any and everyone to come in. So how will we still serve those people at home? Sarah, I like what you were saying. People want to see your instructors, your personal trainers, because those are familiar faces. Those are people I feel I have a connection with, a bond with. I still want to interact with them. So if I have instructors and personal trainers who can't come back to work for whatever reasons, they don't feel like it or their kids are not back in school, maybe I will utilize that talent to run our social media service and presence, yeah? so that they can still work and we can still have that leverage within our community. And those instructors and personal trainers who can come back to work, we still supply them the, what they need to remain safe and effective with the services that they deliver. And um, we got another comment, somebody said, how do we do this legally? 
like what are my legal obligations if I'm an employee or an independent contractor of the club? Do I still have the right to post on Facebook and ask people for donations or, you know, contributions to my professional services? I still like the idea of donations because then people can give even more. Um, but how do we do this legally? Well, legally, if you're a part-time employee, employee, you can do whatever you want to during your free time, but so can the employer. You know, Paul can just say, hey, I'm paying you a great, you know, fee to come back and do this for the facility. Are you in or are you out? And maybe they choose to be out. Maybe they want to stay on their own. Or maybe Paul says, and, and of course, I'm just staring at him, even though I feel like I'm on the Brady Bunch right here looking over. But um, Paul, how are you going to handle that? In, re in regards to our staff and, uh, and the potential of clients straying with them, um, luckily, I haven't had, had to deal with that because, um, I can, well, where could they take them to? If they don't have their own resources, they don't train out of their own home garage, where can they take them as far as... Um, from a live interaction standpoint, maybe train them at their house, I guess. Um, it's a slippery slope, I don't, I don't believe so. I don't doubt that it's going to occur in other places. So here's an example. My wife is a fitness professional. I like to say fitness professional instead of personal trainer at the Boca Raton Resort. My client is the president of the Boca Resort, a big wig in town. So now we have a beautiful gym garage in our household. She's been taking resort clients and training them in our garage. Now that she's no longer get, giving away a cut of her training services to the resort. She's like, wow, this is quite fruitful. Do I want to go back to the resort? So in a big, big corporate resort membership or big box gym, you may see them more prevalent, but from a boutique standpoint, I don't think I'm going to see it, but I don't doubt that it's going to occur. I think it's a matter of the, the amount of morale and, and um, you know, climate and temperature you have with your staff members for them to come back. Um, Kay brought some great points with regards to, um, you know, why would you want to relinquish virtual advantage and just give it away now that you have people live? So my thought when she was saying that was, people are buying Peloton, they're buying Tonal, they're buying Mirror, and they're buying Hydro. They're not renting them and giving them back. So if something like this, like a global pandemic, is just catalyzing and accelerating what the future of society is, then you need to roll with that and read the book, Who Moved My Cheese? Because you gotta be able to roll with what's going on. And if not, you're in the dust antiquated. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't I, under buying it. Sarah, can I jump in on that about the employees? Because employees are out there training clients at home, instructing classes from home. A way that I'm trying to get that interest back to my business, I'm incentivizing employees. One, I'm also very intentional when I hire individuals. They've got to have principles that align with my business model. Otherwise, that's just competition at the start. Yeah, but incentivizing my employees, hey, if you generated way more following from doing your at-home workout, how can we make an agreement? Can I pay you the way that we pay um, our frontline staff for you know, memberships? Can I do that with my group fitness instructors? Can I give you an additional class on the schedule? How can I optimize the services that you've provided to support what we have in-house? Because as you were just saying, sir, it's a value that we have in person. Sure, it's nice that it's accessible, that I can do it at home, but I still have my kid throwing cheese at me in the background. I want to escape from them too. So I want to go to the gym once it's open eventually. So it's just, the, it's not about competition anymore. It's about complimentary services. Oh, I think that's very viable. And uh, Marissa, I'm seeing you nod. So you've got to contribute here. I mean, I think that there's, this is going to be a paradigm shift in how we uh, treat our instructors and pay them. I, I saw a comment about uh, why would, and I know like I'm taking great classes from one of the instructors that used to teach for us and she's making a lot more money right now doing online. Um, so it's going to be a dilemma from the instructor perspective. Um, and thinking, you know, putting on my club owner hat, Paul, you said you haven't uh, experienced that yet. Um, there will have to be a way, like he said, to find a way to work with individuals. It, someone said, do you pay them per, he per head? Maybe, you know, it just, it depends. Everyone's going to have a different structure, but I think 
we're really going to have to think about what that looks like now because not only will we have online with our instructors, but they're going to want to do some on their own. And uh, legally, Sarah, I know you would address this too. Uh, you can have a non-compete clause to a certain degree, depending on what state you're in. Uh, for us, we used to have, you know, you can't teach within a couple miles of us, but really you can't, at least in California, you can't inhibit someone from making a living. Um, it's right. legally not so, you know, whether it's building a culture where they really want to be a part of your club and teach for you and make sure they're compensated adequately, that's going to be really important. But know that some of them may be taking the opportunity that they took advantage of during COVID to continue that. Um, this has been amazing. And I do encourage you, if you're a club owner and you're looking at the non-competes, um, you can just Google non-compete and you can find one. And it's gotta be, it's gotta be very limited. It's got a limit in geography and, and duration. So it can't go for 10 years. It maybe can last for six months after they leave that they can start doing their own practice, et cetera. But we gotta be lenient. We've got to, if my, my number one thing is communicate. Just, if you're an instructor, communicate with an owner. If you're the owner, communicate with your staff and keep the communication as open as you can. And there is no reason that you shouldn't have weekly meetings with your personal trainers and with your group fitness staff. They should be doing it weekly on Zoom. Very important and, and that communication is key. And then also what you wanna look at doing is evaluating regularly because you know, Paul, you're going to open your facility and you're going to think you're totally ready on Tuesday. I have a friend in town. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Like said, I'm ready. I've got dots on the floor. I've got like a map for people to walk. You know, people don't read the map. People walk in the door that's designated, you know, exit. They're walking in when they're supposed to, when other people are walking out. There's people hugging in her lobby. She's having a heart attack. Don't touch six feet apart, you know, you can touch with your elbow. That's what you, people don't follow directions. People don't read. And there, there, are, there are people out there that are just dying to get out of their basement and into your facility. Um, so we've just got to be flexible. We've got to communicate. And every single day, at the end of the day, you've got to do a learnings and where, how is it going to be today? Because the way it is today is not the way it's going to be tomorrow. I do not want to end this webinar. I really am enjoying this. You guys are absolutely fabulous. Paul, I know you don't do consulting or don't, you know, you have, you are only here to open your heart up to us. And I sincerely appreciate that. Kia is an amazing, amazing presenter. Be sure to check her podcast out. Please be sure to take one of her certifications with Far Above. She's a beautiful mover. Marissa, ah, oh, love this woman. She is always on our, she's been in our um, women's leadership uh, presenter for us and she's presented at several manias and going to be at our live streaming as well. So is Kia and Paul doesn't know this, but so is Paul <laughs> in the future. Um, I'd be more than happy to, no problem. This is fun. I'm going to let you guys please do a, a, a quick like all right, take away, do this, make it short and sweet because I'm over time and I want to let Katrina and Denise like have a night off to themselves. I'm going to start with you, Paul. Okay, um, do this. Um, have everyone sign a health declaration form. I have a prefab one that we designed. Understand the risks of coming in. Obviously, if they're coming back to your gym, they are voluntarily consciously knowing the risks of involved of getting back into your facility. So I have about six or seven bullet points. Have them sign it. That's a great way to at least cover your backside a little bit from the, from the get-go. Um, have fun. Once again, as far as interpersonal pleasantries, always ask someone, am I able to elbow bump you, give a hug, handshake? And then um, just have your eyes dotted and your teeth crossed in regards to disinfecting. And nothing is ever foolproof, but all you can do is, this was our two-month our two -month mantra. Do what you can while you can with what you have. You're human. You're not perfect. Okay? Just remember that. Yeah. I love that. And would you do me a favor is after this webinar, would you email me? Would you mind if I posted that six or seven bullet points 
in that release? I have it on a PDF file. Yep. Beautiful. And we will put it, we will post it with the recording of the webinar. Kia? Yes. Oh, absolutely. First of all, thank you all for being here. We just covered a lot of this in detail on our podcast that Sarah has referenced. It's called Fit and Fierce on the Mic. We're on iTunes, Spotify, and other channels as well. What I will leave you with, everyone, is to remain true to who you are. Reinforce your presence, your brand equity, and your brand positioning, and make yourself truly accessible. Dive into what that word means and what it means to your community. Thank you all so much. Thank you. And Marissa? I would say this would be the opportunity, except for Paul, because he's in the thick of things. Some of us have a little bit more time now. We're not working far away, and we have uh, time to really work on our business. So this is a time to really dive in, use Google, and search best practices for social media, and take the time to really go through some Instagram checklists, making sure you're doing everything that needs to be done. Same thing with Facebook, and really up that game. You have time, use it wisely. Great. I want to thank you all for joining us. I'm going to leave you guys with a little video. So I'm going to take the liberty of sharing my screen and show you guys a wonderful video about live stream mania. Here we go. Introducing live stream mania powered by zoom. SCW has developed an entire fitness convention direct to your home. Interact in real time with live training alongside nationally renowned presenters. One affordable flat fee gets you access to the full schedule of sessions with no walls and no limits. Move between any of our live streaming sessions at your leisure with no pre-selected classes and no boundaries. This is our way to empower you, our SCW community. So register. Earn your CECs and get educated because now is the perfect time to invest in yourself. Take care and we look forward to having you at one of our many live stream mania sessions soon. Great. Great. Thank you all. Thank you all for joining us. Have a wonderful night. Don't forget Tuesday, we have another webinar for you guys. It's on re-emerging from the pandemic live and online with four wonderful presenters. Uh, let's see who it is. Jeff Howard, Kelly Roberts, and Doris Thews. So we'll see you Tuesday. Have a good night. Thank you all for joining us.